Hello, everyone. Welcome to Rash's World. Happy New Year to everyone. And on our very first podcast of the year, I have the pleasure to welcome uh, Reverend James Parker to the program. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you today? Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Wonderful. So I'd like to start off with the toughest question, um, which is uh, how would you briefly describe yourself? And what would you ah, say? Briefly. Mm-hmm. Briefly. <laughs> well, <the keyword. laughs> I'm a Midtown kid, a, mid, a Midwestern kid from the uh, Motown area. And I very much am into music. I grew up during the 60s and the 70s mm-hmm. and had a, had a fairly good uh, household. Parents, both parents, uh, loving siblings. We all kind of work together. Uh, you know, I, I, from, from way back, the, the most that I can remember is that we were in church every day. My mom uh, was volunteering and working at the church all the time. So we're always there. She was deeply into education, both my parents. And so life went pretty well, you know, as long as we brought home the good grades, uh, we were rewarded. <laughs> and so uh, I think I, I got into sports and was kind of doing a lot of, you know, extracurricular activity. And uh, my dad, uh, who uh, had an accident in my um, in my high school years, uh uh was 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 stricken and had a brain um blood clot in his brain and so that kind of shifted the focus of my entire family because he was the breadwinner and um and and in that and in that kind of way the my old religion wasn't working for me anymore um what what my parents were teaching me and so i started i started a quest for something different and uh found the new thought movement uh, which is uh, unity and I started learning uh, about all this power and all this goodness and all these things that are within me that I had yet to unlock or to activate. And I, I and I followed the journey and uh, ended up in seminary a few years later. And Marianne Williamson, uh, she uh, kind of took me under her wing and 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 helped me get through. And you know, I learned a lot, and and it just kind of led to where I am today. It's been a great ride, great experience, loving, and and just very spiritual and grounded. Oh, what a wonderful story! Thank you so much for sharing that. And we're going to talk about your book uh, today, "The Wealth Spark: Igniting Your Path to Abundance and Success." And uh, it's a spark; it can lead to wealth. And I like how you talk about the wealth mindset versus the scarcity mindset. And that was yes. something that was new to me. And Kristen Raggedson wrote the book on the end of scarcity and uh, which kind of opened my eyes. It's like, it's not about the money, really. It's about the mindset. And then the money will flow if you're open to it. Yes. And fun. So let's talk about that. I think that's an a, amazing point that you're making here. Yeah, I, I love I love uh, that you're bringing that up. So, you know, so many of us are, are kind of stuck in, in a scarcity mindset. We We've carried things in from our past. We have limiting beliefs about, you know, who we really are and what we can do. We tend to talk to ourselves negatively. Um, and this leads to uh, this this growing essence of bringing in or attracting negative energy to ourselves. So I talk about the wealth mindset in the book, too. To kind of shift the perspective that if we began to talk uh, about positive things, become optimistic about ourselves, and to you know get out of the limiting and lack beliefs, we can attract positive and good things to ourselves. Mm-hmm. And I think again, when you talk about potential, that's so important. And to bring in the the hard work to to bring it into fruition, that's important. A lot of people are kind of defeatist. They're kind of they have negative thinking patterns. Uh, they would say, "What's the point?" And they would point out to other people who's got who got better uh, fortunes than they do, and so on. And I think that's that's defeatist in many ways because we really have to like focus on what we can do and and work hard, and things do fall into place over time. No, you're absolutely right. And that's kind of the premise of the book is what I really want people to get out of is this competitive nature or this looking at things on the outside as being the basis of who they are on the inside and to begin to find our real true highest self that's within us. And if we do that, it it, it just brings about this whole uh, new dynamic, this paradigm shift within that allows us to begin to see that we're all one, we're all working at this together. And that uh, if we put forth our own effort, we can make a difference in the world. 
And and the misconception of wealth, because it's it's not just money. Although money is important, of course, it's necessary, and we yes. like to have it, and it gives us also more opportunities. But if that's if that's what the only thing you're looking for, then uh, you're not going to be happy because money does not bring happiness, as we know. And if you're holding on to it, or you want to just increase it without spending it, without spending it on yourself, on your on your loved ones, on helping others, then it's pretty pointless. Absolutely. I, I talk about uh, how uh, many times we get stuck in this misconception in our society uh, that prosperity uh, ensures uh, this lasting well-being and happiness. And that's a total misconception. Uh, you know, there's no way that um, that by having prosperity in one aspect of your life that it automatically ensures you know, success in another aspect of your life. It's really about integrating all aspects of your life, your your emotional self, your your personal self, your relationships, you know, your health, all of those things add up to true wealth, including financial gain. So it, it's, it's, it's very important that we begin to take this holistic approach uh, to prosperity. I, I remember hearing a song by Gret Lake from uh, Emer Lake, uh, Emerson Lake and Palmer. And the lyrics there stuck with me. You don't have to be well to be wealthy, but you have to be whole to be holy. And I love that <laughs> because it really points to that. And the people who are wealthy in terms of financially wealthy are usually not well off, basically, not happy. Very true. Mm -hmm. Very true. It, it, there's, there's this, that, that's another misconception. It's so true that, you know, even by having money, it does not mean that you're going to be happy or that you're going to find fulfillment or purpose in life. It's it's really about coming into a, a peace of mind, a, a wholeness uh, within. I talk about holistic wealth because it's really about uh, enriching every aspect of your life, not just your finances. It's it's igniting a path to a, a more fulfilled and, and abundant way of living. Mm -hmm. And everything in moderation, too. I mean, I, I'm, I'm a fan of hard work. I, I grew up in Germany, so that's important for, for, yes. for everyone there. But at the same time, I think sometimes they push too far and finding here the self-care, a moderation of like really taking care of yourself, of giving yourself some 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 downtime, some free time to also develop, to process and to also develop spiritually as well. So not just be yeah. looking at the the one aspect of our life. Yes, I, you know, I watched one of your interviews where you said that you you take Sunday and you don't do anything. You that is your day. Uh, you're kind of your Sabbath, your day of rest. And and everybody needs to adopt that concept. We really need to take time off as well. We need to set boundaries in our lives. We need to look at you know our nutritional values. How are, how are we eating? What are we putting into our bodies? Are we taking a walk from time to time? Are we getting enough rest at night? All of these things factor into. Uh, bringing forth our own greater uh, wealth, wholeness, and well-being. Yeah, and you know, holistic is the, the the magic word here because like people yes. sometimes focus just on their body and they work out and do exercise, which is great. But then you need the whole thing, and as, as some people just look at the mind and they meditate, and which is also good. But I think it's a combination of all of them, including here the spirit or soul, or whatever you want to call that, which is also part of it. So it's it's yes. it's much more complex and intricate, and we often lose sight of that. It's not just one part of it. You have to look at the whole thing, the whole picture. Yes, I absolutely agree. I mean, one of one of the most important factors to me when it comes to self care. I mean, beyond even the the eating right and the the exercise and the lifting and running that you know, and that's so many that's so pervasive in our society is uh, just a moment of meditation. You know, taking the time in the silence, getting yourself centered and grounded, paying attention to your breath. You know, that kind of brings us into the present moment. It allows for a more uh, succinct way of living. And, and it just uh, benefits us in such a great way that I believe that the first thing that we should do before doing anything is to really take the time to go within and, uh, and allow ourselves to really be lifted up so that we can move forward into a greater uh, experience. Mm -hmm. and, and you mentioned also mindfulness in your book, and that's something I, I, I very much believe in more than meditation, because for me, yes. mindfulness is like meditation in action. 
And that's yeah. also an important part that you stress. It's like taking action, not just standing still, not just waiting, not just praying for things to change, but actually being the change and becoming yes. part of it. And I think that's hugely important. And it's often uh, 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 not uh, given enough attention for, for many of us where people would pray, for example, for things. And then when it doesn't happen, they get upset. And it's like, no, it doesn't work yeah. that way. You have to do yes, the part yes. as well. Yes, yes, absolutely. And, and, and I think that's a, a very important factor. Really, uh, when, when we think about mindfulness, we're really talking about taking action, in a sense, it's really uh, allowing us time for self reflection and self awareness. Uh, well, we, I, 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 I kind of term it putting feet to our faith, you know, we, we uh, have to be able to walk the walk, mm -hmm. you know, to to take the things that we've learned, the things that are within it. You know, we have everything we need inside of us. And all we really need to do is to take a time to become conscious, you know, to become aware. And these things will will, will factor into the, the greater good of our lives. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm reading uh, Father James Martin's book on Come Forth on Lazarus. And uh, the, he mm -hmm. has this, he talks about the two terms that they have in, in, in the Greek language and in the New Testament of time. And there is mm -hmm. chronos, which is the time, the actual time, the day, uh, time of day, and so on. And there's also um, kairos, which is the time, the right time. You hit when the uh, iron is hot, you strike there, yeah. and just yes. that moment. And so the two don't necessarily overlap. So when we do an action, we expect immediate results. And when it doesn't happen, we get frustrated. But that's a different time because that's more earthly time. Whereas like if you look at spiritual time or God's time, that's more Kairos. It's like, well, it will happen, but maybe not as fast as you would like to have it. But you still have to put in the seeds so they can grow. And it's yes. like farming, I think, is, is, is a great example of that. It's like the harvest will come. That's Kairos. But it's not on a time schedule that we would have. Like in a week, I'm going to have this, right? And I think yes. many people who have these, like, and I, I do New Year's resolutions uh, myself, but I've gotten a bit more realistic about that. It's like last year's was was just wilder than this year's. Yes. This year's is more <laughs> down to earth because it takes time, and we have we shouldn't get frustrated if we yes. don't get the quick results. And that's important to keep in mind, and just keep going, not stopping. That's the important part there. That's right. Yeah, there there is a divine timing to everything, mm -hmm. and you know it's 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 really about us becoming uh, patient within ourselves. Things are always happening in our lives. Something is always moving, and if we just take the time to just be grateful for the moment we have, just get into a moment of gratitude. Yeah. You know, allow yourself to see the good that you already have. You, you automatically open the way for, you know, the magnetism that is within you, that that inner attraction that's pulling things in. You don't have to do anything in that regard. Just do the work, as you said, you know, plant the seeds in ready soil and, and just allow the harvest to come forth. Yeah, exactly. And that's mindfulness helps to see that because often when we walk around, we have these blinds and we don't see anything and we don't see the progress was actually made. And this yes. is one of the issues I have with with spiritual growth and so on, because it's not as visible. Like financial right. growth is visible. I have a new car, I have a new apartment, but a spiritual one, you you can't, it's it's hard to harder to show to others, but then others can sense it too. And we often, when we look back, it's like, oh my God, a year ago and now I've grown so much. And I think taking stock of that too, it's like we continue to grow. And for me, I like also the idea of faith. It's something that's not something that comes to you all at once and you got it. It's something that you work towards. It's a lifelong achievement of sorts where you you keep going and you keep getting better at it and so on, not just something that uh, comes to you suddenly. Or Would you agree or disagree with that, actually? With, with, uh, in regards to, to spiritual maturity, I, actually, I absolutely agree. We, we are always growing. We are always evolving. We are evolving beings. The, the universe is still evolving, and exactly. we're evolving right along with it. So... It's it's when we get stuck in resistance and you know the unwillingness to change that we kind of get stuck, and 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 I and I I could actually pull faith into that discussion because faith for me you know is 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 not something that happens outside of us. Mm -hmm. You know, faith is a part of who we are. It's just like love, peace, joy, all these things that are within us. You know, and it's the same spiritual nature that God 
birthed us with. Mm -hmm. And so I believe that faith is something that we have to activate in a sense. You know, a lot of us, like you know, we, we think about losing faith, but you can't lose faith. You know, it's it's yeah. already there. You just have to, to activate it, to get it working. Reconnect with it again. Reconnect again. with yeah. it. Yeah. Allow yourself to get in the flow of faith. And it, the currency, whether it's health or whether it's love, whether it's peace, whether it's finances, you know, if you have the faith, you know, to 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 move forth toward what you truly desire, it will come forth to you. It It's the perceiving power of the mind linked with the power to shape substance. So it's going to shape whatever you put your faith in. Yeah. You just have to allow it to happen. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And I think we, we have a very limited sense of how we see ourselves too. I think it's often very limited. And even the belief of, of religion, it's like you pray for something, you don't get it, therefore you get upset. And it's like, I don't think it works that way. I mean, plus, I mean, <laughs> God is not somebody who just gives you wishes. It's not a genie. It's like, I have these three right. wishes and, uh, yes. and they don't come in fruition. Therefore, you're not a real genie. I think it's like many other things that uh, are at play. And we shouldn't just look at ourselves. We should also have a wider perspective Perspective, not just the ego here by this, I mean, but sure. that the effect it has on others. And sometimes and often things that I wished for were actually not the best for me. Yes, other yes. things came along that were a much better <laughs> choice. So to have that that open mind towards things that happen to us too, and not be frustrated when our wishes don't come true in, in some cases. Yes, absolutely. It, you know, I I, I, find, I see it all the time where people are trying to barter with God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, if I do this, then I should get that. And, and that's just not how it works. As you said, we, we really have to just allow ourselves to just get into the flow, just allow ourselves to come into a peacefulness, a mindfulness, um, to know that you know, we already have the spirit within us. Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is within. Mm -hmm. And so we really have to begin to look within ourselves, you know, and, and that's where that that quote from uh, that says, seek ye first the kingdom and, and his righteousness and all things shall be added. If we just allow ourselves to just get into the flow and seek our higher power, whatever that may be, Buddha, you know, Jesus, seek, you know, whatever, whatever your higher power is, just get into the flow of that, your source, and you will attract your good to you automatically. Yeah, I want to talk also about visualization, because that's something mm. I find fascinating, and vision boards and manifestation and so on. So what would you say about that? And then I'll share some of my experiences I've had, too. Oh, boy. Visualization mm -hmm. is, 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 is very simple, but it's not easy, because many people can't allow themselves to just stay in that moment. I, I, I liken visualization to, um, to, to just allowing yourself to to focus on your truth, you know, who are you? You know, what what is it that you believe? First, accepting who you are you, you, is, is the first thing that we must do. But also, we have to begin to see our greater good. We have to see, you know, to be able to visualize what it is that we want and desire in our lives. And by doing that, we, we really uh, allow ourselves to focus in and that's where the magnet comes in where we begin to draw things to us we attract all these things because we're actually in visualization we're lifting ourselves up then what's the old quote if i'd be lifted up i draw all things to me but if we had just lift ourselves up in, in a vision of our highest selves we draw all things to us yeah, I love that. And for me, it was like uh, years ago, I saw uh, uh, this this documentary about this program about uh, The Secret by Rhonda Byrne, who talks oh, about yes. you know imagining things and they come true. And there's examples yes. of, of people who've done that. Jim Carrey, notably, who sure. had this like dream of a check and he actually physically had it. He's really like, That's right. he yeah. it, and it came true. So and I thought like the first time I saw that, I was like, well, this is bogus. <laughs> and but <laughs> I'm going to try it anyway. And the sure. other thing that was important, though, is like you do have to have a certain amount of faith. I mean, they, you might think it's a bogus, but there's certain like, OK, let's let's trust this process. And then yes. what I wished for actually came true. I yes. wish I had wished for more because the amount of yeah. money I wished for was actually not that much. But yeah, yeah. You know, it was <laughs> shocking when it did happen. And now I'm, I'm, I'm kind of practicing it. But again, in a more realistic fashion, because you still have to do the hard work. It doesn't come sure. on its own. But sure. it is so true. And I'm just fascinated. And I like tell people, this works. Believe in it. Yes. It does work. Yes. 
It, it does. And, and you're absolutely right. I, I have began with, with my visualizations. I, I always finish them or conclude them uh, with a statement. You know, I, I, I will I will have my vision. I will see it. Uh, clearly, I will see the details in it. I'll see it in the present moment. I don't see it out there somewhere. I see it right now. And then I always say this or something better. And that way I leave the door open <laughs> for even greater things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I remember years ago, things were not looking good for me. I was like, I didn't have a job. And I was wishing that I could buy my son, who was uh, three or four at the time, an iPad. Uh, and then out of nowhere, I got a job and I was able to do that. And I was like, oh, okay, yeah, <laughs> let's, yeah. let's, let's wish for more. Let's keep this going because this is, that's fun. right. Yeah. But at the same time, there's also the growth and the, the faith that grows in it. It's like, wait a minute, there is something there. There is something that's listening to our desires. Yes. If we are honest, if we are uh, truthful as well in our actions, in our intentions, desires, and so on. Yeah, I, I, and 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 I believe that you you have to stay in alignment, you know, with your mm -hmm. truth. You said it earlier. It's the connection, mm -hmm. and as long as we allow ourselves to stay connected, we're open to all the gifts in the universe. The moment we separate ourselves from our from from our highest good, that's when the challenges start coming into play. Yeah, and and often, and you talk about this often. Often, people uh, are not very open to feedback or any type of criticism, and where people are on the defensive a lot, sure. and understand the drive towards that, but it's not helpful. And I think if you're at peace with yourself, if you again in alignment, I like that that term, then it doesn't affect you any criticism. Now, even if it's it has a bad intention, but often the criticism is actually helpful. And I yes. found like the, the times where things people criticize me for things and I was open to it, I grew a lot more than when, when I was on the defensive because then that yes. made things much worse. Yeah, and, and we all have to adhere to feedback in one way or another. There's there's no one who doesn't receive feedback. And we're also constantly receiving feedback from ourselves. I, I, I talk about it as the feedback loop, you know, and we have mm -hmm. to begin paying attention to the feedback loop because it's not there to, to harm us. Mm -hmm. It's there to to help us, to, to bring us into a place of wholeness. So if we begin to listen we'll begin to see that even in our failures, we're actually learning something. We're growing. Greater wisdom is coming forth, and the experience is leading us to something even better. And I think it's powerful to say, I don't know. I think that that yeah. statement, and as, as a parent, especially with my son who is asking all these tough questions, and at times I would say, you know what? I don't know. And I, I'm, I'm an uh, educator, and uh, as a teacher, I get sometimes questions where I'm like, I don't know the answer. Right. And yeah. so and, and that is actually empowering because we yes. we accept that there are limitations, but that doesn't mean that we are limited because then we can search for more answers. We can look at it in a different way. We can, um, again, continuously learn to to increase our knowledge. And I think that's that's wonderful to be able to say that and accept that instead of having all the answers and knowing everything, which some people say they do, but obviously they don't. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. I, I agree. I, I think we I think we have to stay within the, the, the confines of our own boundaries, mm -hmm. you know, to just remain open and receptive to whatever comes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I often say, you know, I, I have to I have to pray about it. You mm -hmm. know, I, I, I don't know always in a moment. I'm open uh, to what the universe has to say to me about it. The, the answer is always there. Uh, it just not might not be in my mind in that moment, but I'm open and receptive for it, you know, so it, it, it usually comes. Yeah, and uh, intuition is, uh, is huge, important, too. And I think like be, being open to that and it's hard to distinguish intuition versus wishful thinking. Right. And there's a big sure. difference between the two often. And so I think when we say I sleep on it, that's a good approach because it's kind yes. of wait and see. I will sleep on it. I will pray on it. And then the next day. I might get uh, into contact in alignment with my faith or intuition or any of this, this sure. voice that is telling us, oh, this is the right choice. And when I feel that, it's always the right choice, even if it doesn't seem to be right, logically, That's right. Right? Yeah. which is which is pretty, pretty crazy. It's pretty insane. But that is the path to take, I think, in many ways. 
Yeah, I think we always have to remain open to our inner guide, our intuition. Uh, it, it never steers us wrong. Now, there are those who, you know, sometimes the ego may be speaking. You know, you, right. you have to be able to differentiate between the two. And, and, and I give the answer when someone asks me, how do I know it's God speaking to me? How do I know it's my intuition? And I always say, and I believe it wholeheartedly, that you know God is speaking to you when uh, everybody in the situation wins. Yeah. No one loses. Yeah. You know, God's not going to take from one person to give to another and is not going to benefit you at the at the at the at the harm or uh, someone else losing. So, you know, our intuition is a very powerful uh, uh, source that we have within us. If we be, if we just allowed ourselves to become open to the inner voice or or what uh, Elijah calls the still small voice, you know, it, it'll always be there for us, leading us in the right place, in the right direction. Yeah, and that's what mindfulness helps too, to be in touch with our bodies too, because sometimes yes. uh, our, our brains tells us something, but our gut has a different <laughs> saying that's about right. that and uh, different thoughts. And so, and I like the idea of, again, the three brains that we have, our, our brain and then our heart, as well as our gut. And yes. in, in all those three things, I think it's really the gut that has much more knowledge and experience because it's connected to everything, to all three. And that is then the voice of intuition where it's like, this doesn't feel right. I don't know why, but it doesn't feel right. And to really yeah. explore that more than we do in, yeah. in our society. Yeah, I agree. I think the gut is the soul mm -hmm. uh, of, of who yeah. we are. It's a kind of our consciousness you know many people you know they take the james allen view and they you know the the old proverb as a man thinketh in his heart so he is you know so that's that brain and the heart but mm -hmm. i i think that does shape kind of who you are but the soul plays a whole different role you know the soul is the the the, the attractor to everything that's out there in the universe and, and so if you have your soul open if you have a consciousness uh, uh, you you will attract all the good things to you. And I, I, I kind of learned that as well from the secret, uh, from the law of attraction. I, I really put it into play. I know that there's an energy at work. And if I just allow myself to flow in that energy, everything opens up for me. That is wonderful. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And that's that's a wonderful way of, of starting the year with the, with this podcast, of, uh, with the energy of tapping into that, of aligning yes. ourselves. Thank you so much, uh, Reverend James Parker, on being on Arash's World. It's such a pleasure talking to you. And I want to remind everyone that you're, you're an author, you're an ordained unity minister, also a life coach. Uh, you have experience in executive church management as well. And your book is The Wealth Spark igniting your path to abundance and success and i like the word spark too by the way that you are mentioning thank here thank you thank you so much and, and I, I really love the idea of us finding that inner spark within us so it it just it, it just made sense and please uh, if, if you can, I'd love to have people come over to uh, the wellsparkbook.com. Uh, allow yourself to come into the group. We have a great place there. We have a lot of free and, and gifts there for you. And, and there's just a lot of like-minded people there. And we really look to serve a greater good in the world and to come forth with a wealthy, uh, holistic wealth approach. So thank, thank you so much for having me. Happy yeah. New Year to you and everyone, all your listeners. I love your show and I'll keep listening. Thank you so much. Take care. <laughs>